Confederate monuments in Charlottesville, Virginia are staying put for now. A judge recently ruled that statues of Generals Robert E. Lee and Thomas Stonewall Jackson are war monuments and the city can't remove them without the state's permission. In his ruling, the judge said that neither the intentions of the people who erected the statues nor how they make people feel change the fact that the statues pay homage to the Civil War. The case is expected to end up at the state Supreme Court. And the judge's decision comes nearly two years after a deadly white nationalist rally in Charlottesville. The rally was organized to protest the city's plans to remove the statue of Lee. Robert W. Lee is a descendant of General Lee. He's also the author of a new book. It's called A Sin by Any Other Name, Reckoning with Racism and the Heritage of the South. Robert Lee, nice to have you with us. Thank you for having me. You're my pleasure. Um, What's the sin you're talking about in this book? Well, I think in our recollection as a people of General Lee, we have created an image of him that is different from the Lee we know in history. We have made him and his statues and markers into an idol of white supremacy. And idolatry is a big sin um, in, in both the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. So I, I see it as both, both reckoning with the heritage and the history um, that is that is present in our uh, in our current conversations. How old were you when you realized, like, hey, I'm related to someone really, really famous? And what was your reaction? Was it was it great? Was it cool? Was it? I, I had an a honor? deep reverence for Lee, and in some ways, I still do. I have a deep reverence for the fact that people admire him and people really look to him as a character in our history, but he's exactly that, he's a character. We don't have the correct image of Lee. We have to acknowledge that he was a human being. He was flawed, terribly flawed at that. Um, but I still don't think he's beyond r r being a recipient of grace um, in the sense of God, what God uh, did in his life towards the end of his life as he started to see the realities that played out. Um, but he also, throughout his life, he was a, a supporter of, of slavery, fought for the state's rights to own slaves. And so we can't excuse those actions while still acknowledging the humanity of the person. When did you sort of realize that, that you had to overtly do something about this? Well, I talk about that in the book. It took a strong woman of color named Bertha Hamilton, who was my confirmation mentor, who told me that being in ministry, um, I was sensing a call to ministry around the age of 13 or 14, and uh, she realized and recognized that for me to be in ministry and to be a pastor, it took reckoning with some of my heritage and reckoning with the reality that I had a Confederate flag hanging in my room, and that's incompatible with who I am as a Christian. Lee led the charge to keep slavery in America. Why is he revered? I mean, I, I think, I hope, most people would look back and say, that was not a good thing. Slavery in America, bad. That was bad. I think Lee is viewed as, some, is, as someone who uh, is this genteel Southern gentleman, right? You know, this, this cordial person who, is, uh, who, who was a good Christian man. And so we view him as this beautiful representation of Southern culture, which if that's the case, I want nothing to do with Southern culture because it's, it's, it's a heritage and a history of hate, and I can't drive that home enough. You spoke out about your legacy, the legacy of the South, Robert E. Lee's legacy, and you paid a very big price for it. You were basically kicked out of your church. Um, you had a lot of hate email. Um, you're a polarizing figure. You're a young guy. Do you look back with any regret of, on that? I don't look back with regret, but I do wish I would have thought it, thought out what was happening um, so I could at least remember and recollect uh, what God was doing in my life. Um, you know, there's this passage in Mark's gospel where it says, what good is it to gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Um, I was losing my soul um, by being a pastor at a small church that did not want me there. And it took, um, it took realizing that and being um, ousted and, and then also living into my, my identity as a public theologian um, to really get to the bottom of who I am as a person. The book is called A Sin by Any Other Name, Reckoning with Racism and the Heritage of the South. It's a great book and I love the way it's written. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna give copies to my kids so I think that they could really understand the debate that happens. It's not something that schools, I think, cover 
really, really well and really thoughtfully and over a long period of time, and it's a complicated issue. So it's a fantastic book. Robert W. Lee, thank you for talking with me about it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.